Hello, welcome back. Welcome to a brand new episode. As always, I am delighted to have you here. Thanks for being with me. We have four more episodes today. So firstly, with Joe Love. Um, Joe has been such an advocate for mental health and therapy and getting stuff out of our bodies, our minds, all of this stuff that we've carried around for so long. Um, her company, La Bella Loves, is no longer, but she has taken her work and her passion in new directions. So do check it out. And also, for me, there's such a refreshing honesty about Jo, which really stuck with me. And that ability to be able to communicate and talk straight and say how you're feeling and get to the heart of the reality really, really valuable. Next, I'm talking to Lisa Metis, who is an interior designer. She is the founder of Born and Bred Studio. And if you are looking for some inspiration for your home, do check out her socials, Pinterest, Instagram, etc. Her aesthetic is beautiful, very clean, chic, stylish, but it feels really creative as well. I love that chat. It was really, really great. Next, Sammy Blackforth, who is the founder of Freya Luna. Sammy makes a lot of her own skincare products and is really uh, an advocate for looking after yourself on the outside and on the inside. And we haven't had a product-based business for a while. So I think it's really important. I know lots of service bases are out there, but um, yeah, actually making something and creating it and pricing it and getting it out there and putting it on people's shelves and into people's shopping bags for reals is really important to share too. And then you might know Alison Perry, who is a writer, a blogger and a podcaster. You may have even listened to her podcast and her social media has always been a really lovely community. So many people sharing and contributing to the conversation. And at the time of recording, she was about to have twins. So I was so delighted she was able to hold on to the twins for a few more weeks before she had them. Anyway, enjoy, enjoy. I have a new website coming through. I know I'm smiling because I'm really excited, but I'm quite nervous as well. As with all things, there's always a mixed bag of emotions. Um, but if I can help you, do come over at NikkiRaby.com forward slash shop. And if you want to book some one-on-one -on -one time with me, the best thing to do at this stage, just as I'm making the transition with website, just email me hello at NikkiRaby.com and I'll see you there. We'll book in some time. I can't wait to hear more. All right. Lots of love. Bye. When you're starting out before you've got like departments working for you and teams and even just people, um, you just got to work out how to split your time, haven't you? And mm. really, really, not sadly, but the, the reality is a lot of your time, so much of your time goes to making it all function. And particularly in my business, I've got 200 sellers. If they all just ask a five minute question, never a five minute question, it's always a lot more. <laughs> that is like week worth of work, um, then, which is totally fine, but it can like knock out, you know, five minute question can basically knock out like a whole day. <laughs> which yes. I'll answer it. Um, Especially if you like these people as well. I mean, considering that because it is your thing that you will have brought people on. So actually it's all stuff that you love talking about and chatting through and brainstorming ideas that you have to go, oh no, actually I can't be doing that. And to try and solve it, your mind's a lot clearer and you've got more focus because you've had that little bit of time out and you've, you've got raised endorphins. So it's, oh, it's so true. The amount of times where I go in and um, to hot yoga or something and the teacher will say, set an intention for the class and I'll be like, how do I, What? how am I going to communicate with my customers on MailChimp? And like by the end of it, I'll, you know, I won't be the bendiest, but I'll know how to write a cracking email. 
God, that's amazing. That might be my intention next time. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm sure people are like, how do I create greater inner peace? I'll be like, no, nail the digital marketing. Um, (laughs) Where do you get your inspiration from and how does that process work with the client um I think for me definitely with with coaching is it's never a one size fits all and I always want it to come from my client but with the assistance of what I can bring it's very much a collaborative process what does it look like um in your business I think for me I mean first off if I'm dealing with a client the inspiration quite often when people contact me they kind of either fall into two clamps camps they kind of haven't got a clue and completely panicked and overwhelmed by the whole process and feel they should be a certain mold or a certain style but don't know how to iterate it or there's people who just basically want what's on my website <laughs> so, <laughs> can so, you do that yeah yeah so they might go around the houses to go no but I really want what's on your website and like okay then so I think uh, it's basically listening to them like just listening reading in between the lines um offering up a few suggestions like a, a you know and a bit of a wild card to see what they'll go for um and then just marrying their needs with essentially the born and bred aesthetic so that thing with everything in life isn't it if you wait for the perfect time it's never going to happen no no um, it's true it's true it's, and I guess what did you how did you start to get it out there so what's been really effective in terms of marketing and people getting to know you and the products uh, well, when I first um, started, as a, as I said, I was doing a lot of craft fairs, and then I started doing bigger events. Um, so that has been always a great way of um, meeting people, um, talking about the products, introducing people to the products, and they can actually try them and, and smell them, and um, you know they get a real feel for the product. And that has always been the best way: getting the product in people's hands. Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, I can't be doing that every day. Um, <laughs> so, in in I've kind of brought that into other areas of my of my work as well. So, like, uh, I do a lot of networking where I always have <laughs> products in my bag. Um, it's a bit of like a, a Mary Poppins moment where I'm just like bringing stuff out of my handbag. <laughs> so, it's like, <laughs> who is that really nice smelling lady over there? Oh, that <laughs> sounds good. Uh, and also, I think another thing that I think is I think is really important is championing other people. So yes. I I'm a big believer in putting other people in contact with other people. So you know, if you're having coffee with someone and they're telling you how they really want to do X Y Z or meet that person or they're really interested in that kind of area or that line of work saying oh I know someone who you should speak to I want to connect you and being that kind of you know that helping other people not in a kind of selfish or then they'll help me way but I just think that it just cultivates that kind of feeling of everyone's helping everyone and supporting supporting each other oh I totally agree and I think that sometimes we can feel like it's a there's a finite number of opportunities whereas actually the opportunity that you're going for right then might not be right for you I've sort of learned that in the acting industry is that my only responsibility as an actor in the casting room is to do a good job and don't be an idiot and just kind of try and give my best interpretation whether it's right or not it may not be for that thing but if it's if it was good then it's always a mark in the sand of like ah okay we'll bring her in for something else but I've had the opposite as well of sort of going in and reading with semi-known actors um who I won't mention because I am the bigger person in this situation of saying should we read in the waiting room while we're waiting to go in and she was like looked at me like no and because there was that sort of ego to it and actually we're all in this together really definitely that's so true oh 